All right, open your Bibles tonight for preaching to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Revisiting our past. Every one of us has at one time or another wondered what life would have been had we continued living as we once were. I wonder if I would just have continued being and then just dot, dot, dot. Well, I can tell you, without the Lord, it wouldn't be what you would think. Because it never is. You ever gone back to your hometown? Ever driven by the house you grew up in? Uh, ever been in revisited places of the past? Um, actually, it's pretty disheartening sometimes. Because you see things that could have been, that never were. And you see the problems and the difficulties of life that your past could have brought you into. And it makes you thankful that God spared you from it all. In John chapter 21, we are continuing the apostles' relationship with Jesus after the resurrection. The resurrection is just a day, day old, basically. Uh, that night, Jesus visited them. And then a week later, actually it's about a week afterwards, verse 19 says he first met them uh, the first day of the week with the ten. In verse 19. Then, eight days after that, his disciples were, meet, were again in a room. And so this would have been the Monday after. So a week would be Sunday. would be the next first day of the week. And then now it's Monday. And Jesus is now before Thomas. And you would think by now that God had, would, would begin working, especially in Peter. But Peter's not in a good place. And, and I can tell you as a pastor that there are, are many times where I, and, and I'm not preaching this tonight because I, I know anything, okay? So don't, don't, you know, wonder, like, don't be like the disciples. Is, Lord, is it I? Is it I? Who is it? Or, 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 or Peter, but don't be like Peter saying to John, ask him who it is. Instead of Peter asking himself, ask, ask him who. And so John says, who is it? Um, don't be nosy, okay? I'm not preaching this message because I have any information in mind of anybody in this room. But, but I can tell you simply this, that in my ministry and over time, there have been times where I've been greatly concerned and gravely concerned for different people. And there's only so much you can say. O only so much that you can communicate. And there's only so much that is received. And so you're limited. And, and it's frustrating. We're not Jesus, so we can't be as good as He is. Okay? Ever. Uh, no matter a man of God, uh, no matter how close a friend, uh, no matter how spiritual an individual, nobody should have or could have the influence that Jesus would have on a man like Peter. Peter's not in a good place. And Peter, after the wonderful experience with Thomas, and having the Holy Spirit breathe upon him, and receiving the Holy Spirit with Jesus uh, just eight days before is still not in a good place. He is struggling with some of the things that we talked about this morning. And so in chapter 21, he decides to revisit his past. And he makes a statement. Here's what he says. Verse one says, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were 
together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus. So these are the characters in the story. This is, so this is the storyline here. And Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee, Canaan and Galilee, and the son, two son, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. So, what was Simon before he was a, he, he was called as a disciple? What was what were the sons of Zebedee? The other two of his disciples, one of them probably was his brother. Okay. I'm not sure, uh, but I wouldn't doubt that maybe Andrew would have been there too. And Peter makes a statement to these men in verse 3. He says, I go a fishing. Now he's not asking anybody. Uh, it, the, the Bible doesn't say, will, he says, will you go with me? He just says, just a matter of fact statement, I'm going fishing. Guys, I've made a choice, I've made a decision. I am no longer going in the direction, my new direction. I'm going back to my old life. And when anybody, when anybody makes that statement, that is a very, very scary place to be. It's disheartening. But the sad thing is, is when people make that statement, often others will go. And listen to what happens. Look at what happens. It says in verse 3, Simon Peter said unto them, I go fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night... They caught nothing. So here's the first principle tonight. When revisiting our past, number one, it can never be duplicated. It can never be duplicated. Here, here's what our mind does. It plays tricks on us and makes us think that we can, we can dial back time and that what we, our perception of the pleasure, our perception of the fun, our perception of the successes will happen exactly like it was in the past because after all, this is me. I mean, who can be better than me? See, Peter was no doubt a very successful fisherman or he wouldn't have been out, it wouldn't have been a profession. Uh, no doubt James and John, who were partners with him, were also very good fishermen. And that was their livelihood. But they had been called to a higher calling. And this, this is not where they should be. Uh, all of them, all seven of them, had just come from one of the most miraculous events that they had ever experienced, ever, seeing the crucified Lord with his nail scars and his wounded side, and seeing Thomas kneel down and proclaim him as Lord and God. And yet, they all decided to go. So here's... Here are some thoughts, some things to think about in relation to revisiting our past and it never being able to be duplicated. Number one, bringing others into it will not help. It's not going to make it better for you or for them. You are only going to be driven in a direction and continue in a direction that is going to be divisive and destructive to you as well as to them, it is going to set you back spiritually. Always does. It never, it, it, the, the result is always the same. Second, not only will bringing others into it not help, that's found in verse 3, Simon, it says, we also go with thee. 
Number two, you cannot create, this is under, under, it can never be duplicated, you cannot create the same successes. You know, <laughs> we all talk about the good old days. Our basketball exploits, our baseball exploits, our dating exploits, all the things that, you know, our fishing exploits. But, you know, the fish that you catch are taken out of the lake, and those fish aren't all, they, you ate them. And so they're not going to be back in the lake. That 30-pounder is not going to be there. It's probably going to be a 3-pounder or a no-pounder because there's nothing. And so you, you, we, we envision, we, we, we're dreamers, we... we we are delusional at times, spiritually speaking, thinking that we'll be bought back in the past and life will never be better and everything is just going to be just like it was in the glory days. But that's the furthest thing from the truth. The devil would like you to believe that. He really would. So let's see what happens. Verse 3 says, they went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they had more fish than the boat would hold. Probably several times, because Peter was a professional, as well as James and John. There were times where that was exactly the case. They could hardly get to shore. But not tonight. Not today. Not again. Because God is in control of our lives the moment we get saved. We're His. He bought us. And let me tell you, life will never be the same when God has saved you. People all... Pe those who go back and try to reduplicate can never create the same successes. Number three, under that point, it can never be duplicated. It will jade trying to go back and reduplicate the life of your past will jade your spiritual vision. Look in verse 4. But when the morning was come, or was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples, that's every one of those men in that boat, knew not that it was Jesus. Had no idea who he was. Now that's, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, other than the fact that they had their spiritual vision jaded, because they had seen him the day before. And so... He hasn't changed. He's still got the nail scars. Still has the, the hole in his side. And he's still in his glorified state. And yet they still don't, don't get it. Night or no night, no matter, they don't see it. And when people revisit their past, they fall, they think or they get discouraged and they just and they go back life is never the same never they are are never going to find it the same and so <clears throat> that's number 1 it can never be duplicated number 2 it will be as miserable as ever now follow me before you were saved, you didn't realize it, but now that you are saved, you understand the misery that you were in before. Because your eyes have been opened. And when you go back and revisit the past, you will revisit the same miseries that you had that now you know, but you don't think that it's going to be miserable but it's more miserable than it ever was. 
verse number 5. Verse number 5, after they have been out there all night, trying to reduplicate an experience. I don't know what Peter shared with the men, but he said, you know, he said, I, 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 I've, I did it all my life, and I'm good at what I did, and I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm going to go back and, and build a successful business again. Well, we'll go with you. And they're thinking they're going to see success. They're thinking that they're going to revisit all of Peter's exploits of the past. And it doesn't happen. Verse 5 says, Then saith unto them, then, say, then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And they answered him, No. Uh, let me paraphrase it. Hey! How's it going out there? You catching anything? No! Been out here all night. Came up empty. Yeah. A child of God who is away from God and is trying to find satisfaction outside of the will of God is never going to find contentment and satisfaction, is going to be miserable and is going to have just the same result, spiritually speaking. But they don't see it. Here's two things under that in verse 5. It will be as miserable as ever. Number one, there will be nothing to satisfy. Nothing. They came up with a big zero, big goose egg. They thought, they are gonna, they're going to catch something, they'll get it to shore, they'll have a big fish fry, and it's just going to be like old times. Everything's going to be great. <laughs> kind of like Miller time. Doesn't get any better than this. That's what the devil wants you to know. I want you, want you to think. Doesn't get any better than this. Drunken stupor, hangover, Throwing up after you get up in the, you know, either that night or in the morning. Headache. Doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> Lowered expectations, amen? Okay? And so, nothing was there to satisfy. The second thing. Remember, he isn't alone. He's brought six others with him. And so what he is thinking is going to be great success, and what he is thinking is going to satisfy, and what he is, is his mentality was, great, I've got company, and they're going to see an experience of a lifetime. Yes, they did. And here's what happened. First, it was humbling and frustrating. He was humiliated with his peers, and with his friends. How'd you like to be the captain of, an, of, of a fishing expedition, and you got all these, if you will, paying customers who have gone out and decided to give up an entire night away from their homes, away from their families, thinking that this is going to be a great experience and not one of them caught anything. A little humiliating? <laughs> no doubt. Frustrating? Nothing more frustrating than a fisherman not catching something. I, I, I tell people, I, I, I base, and, and this is just me, when I go fishing, I don't go to see nature. I can see fish any time I, I, going to an aquarium. If I want to go see, see fish, that's fine. I'll plan to go and I'll pay to go see them, but I'm not paying to see fish when I go fishing. I'm paying to catch them and bring them home 
and fry them in a pan or bake them in, a, in an oven and eat them. That's what my plan is. Doesn't always work out that way. So Peter was humiliated and he was frustrated. A child of God who is outside the will of God, who's gone back to his old life, is going to find nothing to satisfy, is going to be humiliated because he thinks that he is going to find that satisfaction and he never will, and he is going to be frustrated because what he is yearning for he will never find out there. Because there's nothing that compares to the satisfaction we have in Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's nothing. Revisiting our past. The next thing. Revisiting our past will never be as great as God's way. It will never be as great as God's way. Look in verse 6. Verse 6, Jesus again, he, you know, they, they, in their frustration, he asked them if they've caught anything. They said no. In verse 6, he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Now that's an interesting statement. Coming from a total stranger on the shore, who they've, from their perspective, they've never seen and have no idea who he is. But that's like the still small voice that's tugging in your, at your heart and saying, Hey, why are you here, Elijah? This is not what I've called you to do. Peter, why are you here with these other disciples? And Jesus puts Peter through an experience just like back in Luke chapter 5. It's almost identical. And Peter still doesn't get it. But John does. But here's, here's what verse 6 teaches us. It will never be as great revisiting our past as God's way. Number one, under this point, Doing right is always best. He says, cast on the right side. Now, he could have said to cast on the left side. But whether it's the left side or right side with God is not the issue. Whatever side God tells you to cast on is always the right side. And doing what is right is always best in your life. And going back and revisiting your past will never allow you to duplicate the, the, the righteousness of God. It will never allow you to do what's best for your life. It's always right to do what God wants you to do. And so, what did they have to lose? They've already been frustrated. Peter's been humiliated. And so, they cast, therefore... And now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Quite a contrast, right? A big goose egg, and now a multitude of fish that they don't know how many are in there. That's a huge difference. It's not, there's not even a comparison. And it shows the parity of serving God and serving Satan. A spiritual, spirit-filled life and a worldly, fleshly, carnal life. They're poles apart. They're not even close. So Jesus does cast on the right side. The results are amazing. That's the next point. The dividends are way better than the old life. The blessings of God, the peace of God... The results that come from a life serving God are beyond anything that any of us could ever find in our old life. You tell me anything that you had in your old life that compares 
with what you have, you have had since you've trusted Christ and living for Christ. It's not, there isn't. There, there's nothing that you rejoiced about. Uh, a ball team? No. Because they don't win every day. Uh, it's, it, it's season to season. Um, any experience, there is nothing that produces the results, the dividends, the, the blessings, of, blessings of your life like knowing Christ and serving Him. The last thing under this point, it never has, it, it can never be as great as God's way. Others will not enjoy the same successes with you. In your old past, they will never be able to enjoy the successes like God's way, in God's way. You know it, and they know it. But people still go back and revisit the past. It's, it's uncanny. It's like, well, I, I just have to try. That's what the children of Israel said to Moses. Would God, we were back in Egypt. And their perspective was so warped. They said at least we had food back then. They were starving. And we had, we, we, and they forgot the slavery. They forgot the hard labor. They forgot all that stuff. They could not see it. So, <clears throat> the old life revisiting our past will never be as great as God's way. Go to the next verse, and I want, you to, I want to show you something. In verse 10, the disciples that were in the little ships, they brought the fish to land. They weren't very far from land, and the Bible says they were dragging the net with fishes. And it says, as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread, and and Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. And now look at verse 11. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty and three. Peter was a strong man because it took all the other men in the other boats to do it all by themselves. They got it to the shore, and Peter just grabbed the net by himself and brought it and drug it up to the fire. Now Peter was the one who was responsible for all this. He's the one that got the ball rolling and started it all. Here's the thing. In conclusion, revisiting our past will never produce the kind of relationships that we have with the Savior. The intimacy the fulfillment, the bond, the closeness, it can never be duplicated. And it will never be like what it is with Jesus. Jesus says, bring in the fish which ye have now caught. But note something that it says. It says, as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Where'd that come from? Jesus had no pole. He had no boat. He had no net. Where'd it come from? He said, bring of the fish that they now caught. Do you find anywhere in the text that he took what they brought and used it for fellowship. No. What happened to it? Well, let's look a little further in the text. 
after dinner, verse 13 says, then, cometh, then, then Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, they'd finished eating. Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? What were they? An object lesson? That's it. Jesus didn't need anything from the past to be used for their future. He did not use one of those fish to provide them sustenance that they did not find in the old life. He just let them sit. And he provided a feast. He said, come and dine. He gave them all they needed without any of their own resources or efforts. And that is the difference in our past and the future, or the present, serving the Lord. Verse 10 says, or verse 11 says, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty and three. And for all, there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Now, interestingly enough, the difference in this story in Luke chapter 5 is when Peter drew the fish in, the net break. In this case, they all were there. And in verse 12, it says, Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Note the next expression. Knowing that it was the Lord. Because the same miraculous experience that they had when they got saved, the same feeling they had of conviction and, and understanding of what they were, what, what was wrong with what they were doing, and now being brought to bear in front of Jesus, it's all coming back. And so there was no asking him, who are you? And how did this get here? Because He'd done things like this for three plus years. Do you remember the feeding of the 5,000? Do you remember the feeding of the 4,000? He had taken five, five fish, is it five, lo five loaves of bread and two fish. Is that right? And he, look it up, okay? We won't take the time. He Five loaves of bread and two fish, and he just multiplied it. That's all that was there. That's all he needed. So he created the fish, he created the fire, he created the bread, and he provided it for them, and he says, come and dine. You've had nothing, you've caught nothing, you're hungry, you're needy, I'm here. I'll take care of you. And subliminally, without even having to say it, what he's telling them is, guys, revisiting the past is a waste of time. And that's the last point. Revisiting our past is a total waste of time. Because not only is it not duplicatable, not only is it as, will it be as miserable as ever, and not only will it, be as, will it never be as great as God's way, it will be a total waste of time because <clears throat> Christ cannot be duplicated. The world can't. There's no God out there that is made up. There is no religion. There is no creed, there's, there's nothing that is like the Lord. There's one Lord, one faith, 
And so he himself is the only one that can give you what you need. So don't stray. Just don't try. There's some expressions of frustration still, but not with Jesus. It's conviction in the text. Peter had to come clean with Jesus, and it took Jesus reminding him three times about love. But I want, you to, I want you to note what Jesus says to Peter. It's very interesting. We'll close with this. Peter asks, or Jesus asks Peter to do something beyond what he had already asked him to do. When he called them, what did he ask them to be? Fishers of men. What is fishing for men, basically? Evangelism. We used to call it, we call it soul winning. Outreach. Uh, re witnessing. Now that's what all the disciples were trained to do, right? Correct? But Jesus has a different mission for Peter now. Look what he says. Verse 15. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Is that witnessing? No. What is it? It's discipleship. See, he had asked them to follow him, and they had stopped following him. Following Jesus is discipleship, and feeding his lambs would be pastoring. It would be teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have told you, lo, I am with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. We reach people for Christ, but then we teach them. We disciple them by having them follow Jesus through us. So he says, Peter, if you love me, I no longer want you just to be a witness. I want you to actually also disciple those because I'm going to be gone. And they're going to have to follow somebody else because I'm not going to be here. So guess what, Peter? they are going to be following you as I'm working through you. And by the way, that is what our responsibility is. It's not just being a witness, but it's being a discipler of others as, they, as we bring people along, as we allow the Lord to work in our life. So he asks him three times. And the first time he says, feed my, feed my lambs. Secondly, he says, feed my sheep. And thirdly, he, has, he says, feed my sheep. And there are other things in the text. But we've, we're going to close. Revisiting our past. Our Heavenly Father, we ask tonight, you would speak to us and help us. <clears throat> as we have those thoughts enter into our minds. Thoughts like, you know, it just would just be so much easier if all I just had to do just sit. If I could, if I could just relax, just not, just, just kind of take a, take a break, spiritually speaking. If you revisit your past, it will not go well. Look at the future. Look at, look at what God can and will do with your life. Because nothing in your past is ever going to bring good. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Brian has chosen a song of invitation. Let's stand and our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed.